You are listening to Acadiana's Morning News 712. We have many people in studio this morning, but first, we're going to start with, before we get to Winging It Wednesday, Carol Ross is going to put on another hat this morning. <laughs> oh, yes. It is her home for the holidays hat. Last night, she had on her Cajun Dome hat. <laughs> oh, boy, did I ever. <laughs> that was gorgeous. Hmm? Mm, it was, I, I'm just amazed. It looks, It. I was going to say lovely. That's my girly thing. Yeah. It, but it did. The colors are, are coordinated. It looks professional. It's gorgeous. It is. It it's is. gorgeous, and I understand that uh, the, uh, the the black is what the uh, a lot of the traveling acts like that because they can oh. do total blackout and come in, and it's dramatic and ah, all that. Okay. But, I mean, it was gorgeous, and when they turned down the lights, how about those red aisle lights and all that? I loved them. Wasn't that was amazing? Great. Yes, it looked like the Death Star, according now, to my husband. Did you? I, <laughs> So the Death impressive. Star, yeah, yes, it was. Said, it very did. impressive. And you, were, you expected it to rumble <laughs> yes. as you were dum, landing, dum, right? <laughs> dum, 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 yes. <laughs> but um, now, did you notice a rainbow of colors or just the color, the the mirror ball? Okay, I noticed the mirror ball. That's all I noticed too. Somebody said that there were colors. There might have been. They didn't say there was. The, but the, and Rob was asking me, did I see what was on the ceiling? But here's the problem. I'm, I was already having a little bit of vertigo this week. So when the mirror, when the when the disco ball starts a whirling, I didn't see beyond the disco ball. I really. was whirling. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. So basically, they can turn the entire roof. There's a series. I think it's twenty lights, ten oh. around, and it's two rows of them. So guess what? If Carrie Underwood shows up mm-hmm. and pink's her favorite yeah. color, yeah. it can be it can be neon pink oh. the entire inside. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously, a lot of times he said no, the uh, Phil, who's the who's the Phil Ashurst, yeah, he's Phil a great Ashurst. guy, great um, guy. He said basically, I would turn him on right now, but whenever we went, the basketball team was practicing, and he was like, the coach would not be happy. They didn't. He's turn. already not really happy that we're doing a tour while they're having practice. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I know they, you know it was good to kind of see it in action. Yeah, so. yeah. They didn't. Um, they, I don't remember them doing that last night. The, I don't the, either. Uh, all I remember is the mirror ball was yeah. awesome and the aisle lighting, the uh-huh. red aisle. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just And that gorgeous. was the deal. He said when they ordered the aisle lights and they said they wanted red, the mm-hmm. company was like, huh? we've never put anything doing? but the regular aisle light color, you know? So. No, it's really dramatic. <laughs> anyway, hey, you can watch Winging It Wednesday uh, brought to you by Service Chevrolet Cadillac on Facebook <sighs> right now. We're Facebook live yeah. guys, oh, so don't do anything crazy. I didn't even know. Oh, my God. All right, so Warren, can we talk? That? <laughs> <laughs> Did you put on your makeup this morning? No, ma'am. <laughs> oh, no makeup. I thought we'd, if it's okay with you. Um, the dressing I thought we'd... room was closed here this morning. Would you like some mascara? Because I have some. I also have uh, some hairspray. She keeps the hairspray. <laughs> Just for me, because sometimes after this show in the morning, uh, uh, she says, Rob, if you're going to okay. go out in public, you need to put something in that hair. I got to tell you, that is sad. When I keep the Paul Mitchell in my little cubby desk drawer here, and it's all the men in the building who keep coming. Hey, uh, can I borrow some of that hairspray, please? <laughs> I mean, it's awesome. I'm like, who knew men needed so much product? So do you want to start with the news this morning? <laughs> well, I thought we'd start with Home, home for, for the Holidays Oh, yeah, let's first. start with Home for the Holidays, yeah, and then we're going to yeah. get to the big announcement. Come in here and start interrupting the schedule now. I know, we're mad. You want? Can we do this charity thing, though? No, it's I'm talking sweet. about him. Oh, him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I don't, make any, boss guy. I don't make any promises. I don't even stand. I could blow those out the water, those topics I sent. So let's start with Home for the Holidays. We're getting close. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's a week away. I mean, <gasps> this coming Tuesday, December 6th right. at midnight, that is the end of when you can buy a ticket because okay. they're giving away the home on, and um, and the GE Cafe refrigerator from Tops and the jewelry, for the Tag Hoyer watch from Paul's uh, on the 7th. So wow. the home and all the other prizes will be given away on the 7th. So. Uh, close of business on Tuesday, Home Bank and Doug Ashy. Up to close of business on Tuesday, you can still buy, you know, tickets mm-hmm. during re- regular business hours. Online, it's homefortheholidaysla.com. Okay. Now, and that's up until midnight on okay, December Okay, up until 6th. midnight. And right. so when you're giving here, not only are you getting a chance at winning these these prizes, but so many sheltering Yes, um, it's all places. shelter related. That's our mission at the Acadian Home Builders mm-hmm. is to provide decent, affordable housing. And of course, our partners from KATC TV three. Yes. And of course, we couldn't do it without you all here at Town Square. And your well, that nice lunch that you had was pretty convincing. So, <laughs> 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 yeah, that was kind of nice. But <laughs> but uh, you know, when you think about all of the agencies that yep. we're helping, and the yep. money stays right here, stays in Acadiana. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Faith House. 
mm-hmm. uh, for domestic violence and the children, um, Habitat for Humanity. I mean, what what's not to love about that? You pay it forward. You put in sweat equity. They train people. They pay back. Mm-hmm. I and mean, they do. It, it, that's right. All of these programs are transitional programs. They are not you know, just handouts. Mm-hmm. They are transitional to get people back on their feet. St. Michael's Center for Veterans. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, veterans you know, have great. so many difficulties. So sometimes. many issues that mm-hmm. they face coming back. And so St. Michael's Center is mm-hmm. there for them. And then you have Healing House, which is hope for grieving children, uh, children who have lost a sibling or a parent or a grandparent. You know, these are all agencies that help people transition to a more productive, happier life. Yep. It really is a hand up. It is a hand up, not a hand out. And we need the help of people in Acadia. And I tell you, I think we're on track to, to, to at least match last year. That's what we're praying for. That's amazing. You know, even in this downturn, I think the people of Acadia are so amazingly generous. And it seems to be that when they're facing more struggles, they have more empathy for p- other people who are facing some struggles. Mm-hmm. And you know that's a lot of people right now in this area. Yeah. So we are so deeply grateful for all the folks in Acadiana. The $100 ticket gives you a chance to win a fabulous home. I mean, this home is gorgeous. At Tron Architecture, they outdid themselves. <laughs> and uh, Mark Gallagher with Marquee Builders, and it's in the village of Broussard. So mm-hmm. uh, go out Pinhook Road, and just after you get into the city limits, you pass that city limits sign of Broussard, mm-hmm. you'll see the big sign on the right-hand side and go all the way back, and it's just absolutely beautiful. It really is. Right. Somebody's going to win that house. Yeah. That's awesome. Do you know that the first home that we did, the folks were evacuees from Katrina, and they won, wow. and they are still in that, in that home. home. As far as I know, they are still wow, there. Wow, golly, that's, really that's awesome. amazing. They came really from cool. the Ninth Ward, and these were lovely, wonderful people. They had family here, so mm-hmm. this was where they came. Mm-hmm. They bought a ticket against all odds. They, they won that home. Wow. Just a amazing. wonderful family. Yeah. Awesome. We can get all the information on our website, kpal965.com. Links to buy tickets and everything yep. like that. Yeah. Also, your Thank area, you. Doug Ashy stores. Yes, as well. Doug Ashy and Home and Bank. Those, oh, yeah, Home you know, Bank. Doug Ashy and Home Bank. We got to actually meet the luncheon I was talking about. Yes, the yes. great luncheon that Carol put on <laughs> at the Acadia uh, Home Builders. Me, the Home Builders. <laughs> and uh, and uh, <laughs> we got to meet a lot of, of the people responsible at the individual stores for this. So, obviously, just such a great cause. Yeah, it they is. really are committed, and we are, we are so appreciative of our sponsors. As All right, well. let's get yeah, in get to ticket, our... People. Before we get in... Oh, 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 oh you're oh, going to interrupt the schedule now. A special yeah, message a, by serious, Warren Cottle. On a serious note, okay. they're talking about home for the holidays. It, yes. It brings up my, one of my favorite movies about holidays is Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. <laughs> And then this morning I walked in and there's a plaque in front of me that says, Life needs more hoes. No, it's, no, that's then not I, then what it I says. Looked, then I looked at it again. It says, Life <laughs> needs more ho, 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 <laughs> and mistletoe. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see, do not put anything like that in front of him. And he, that was his special message for today. <laughs> 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 Remember, You're there crazy. are kitties riding in the car with their mommies and daddies. <laughs> Be careful. Well, that's what Santa Claus says. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I I have so many things to say, but we're not on Sirius XM, so. Um, I, I'm out of breath. I laugh so hard on that one. So we have news uh, this morning from the Trump campaign, another series of tweets, which is, hey, it, this might replace the press corps. I mean, hey, you might get the information mm-hmm. straight from the president. I think that's but, his intention. But a Trump uh, will leave the Trump organization, uh, putting it in the hands of his adult children. Um, he said the presidency is too important of a task, and he wants to be focused on that, yeah. which I think you know is is what a lot of people have been wanting to hear, especially given – some of his business interests that he's had, not that they're bad, but um, even this morning there was a story about the Trump, the new Trump Hotel in D.C. There has there's something to do with the lease there that he can't be in office and 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 run it. So here's the deal: he's he's going to be out. It's going to be in the hands of the of the Trump children. I assume when he's out of office, he can just roll right back in. Oh, uh, you know the the company yeah. has your name on it. Yeah, I mean so, when you have as many interests as he has all over the world, it's very easy to say, oh, they're they're getting a special deal. They already complaining about that delegation that he met with from India, from India for a yeah. deal that was already in the works. So. Uh, I think they'll figure he has a very smart executive counsel, Don McGahn, who also happens to be a rock musician. <laughs> I found that out the other night. But uh, anyway, he's a very smart guy, and I think they'll figure it out. So it's just one of the kind of latest picks you kind of talked about his cabinet. Uh, a couple of his people working for him are counsel. Uh, what do you think about his cabinet picks this week? Elaine Cho, 
Uh, I mean, I mean, she's she's been she's served in three different administrations in three different departments. Well, I thought it was the comedian for like five seconds. I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, that's what's going Margaret on? Oh, yeah, Margaret Cho. Cho. Oh, Margaret. Okay, there you go. Elaine Chow. Oh, oh, sorry, Elaine Chow. Chow. Yeah, it's actually okay, that's Mitch right. McConnell's wife. Yes, too, indeed. Right? Yes. All right. All right. What do you think? Well, that was the one that, uh, I tell you what, this may be the perfect manifestation of Trump's Machiavellian <laughs> picks. I mean, if you think about his picks all over the board, some of them are insiders, some of them are outsiders, some of them are really brilliant. And, uh, but, but, you know, of course, the big, the big um, negative is that she's married to Mitch McConnell. The big positive is that she's married to Mitch McConnell. If Trump wants to have this major transportation bill, how many times have we heard this, uh, I think everybody's a little wary of that mm-hmm. because of the quote unquote stimulus with all the shovel ready jobs by Obama, which turns out all the shovel ready stuff was in Washington. But anyway, so uh, maybe there's a, a method to this uh, picking Elaine Chow. But she, I mean, she does have a resume. Mm-hmm. She was um, transport- a deputy transportation person under Bush 41. She was labor secretary under Bush 43, and she's served in several other administrations as well. She is eminently qualified, I believe. It's just that when you see an insider like Elaine Chow come in and, you know, she's married to Mitch McConnell, who has been a major roadblock for some things. But in this case, he may fast track this uh, highway construction, which we desperately need. We do need it. But I would say they need to stipulate maybe 10 percent goes to design and engineering and 90% 90% goes in asphalt and concrete and get those things built. Yeah, just get them done. Get mm-hmm. them done. Warren, your thoughts yeah. on some of the picks? Uh, well, first of all, on her, I would, you know, that the, the, <laughs> the, the incest and the nepotism in Washington <laughs> is about 42,000 layers deep. It's hard to pick anybody, and I think in the United States, who doesn't have some kind of connections in there. It's sort of like dealing with the mafia, except the mafia is more honest than the politicians <laughs> in Washington. And that uh, this more woman, return on the buck, too, you know, I guess. The, the, putting out her resume, you know, about work for Bush 41, Bush 43, and all this, that, and other. Every time I hear that, I go back and think of Wendy Graham. What a corrupt individual that she and her husband turned out to be as a corrupt couple. And that, you know, with Mitch McConnell, I'm, there, there's only one thing about it. If Donald Trump is looking at this, as the as the key to the vault, he said, as long as I got her on the payroll, it's kind of like the Godfather. You know, hey, we're making an offer they can't refuse. <laughs> and so, you know, I think that is the whole point about this. He knows that with her there, he'll get Mitch McConnell to do anything he wants Mitch McConnell exactly. to do. Because Mitch McConnell is too damn goofy. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what to you really walk down the street by himself. Well, and can you imagine the pillow talk? Pillow I mean, talk if, 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 with Mitch McConnell. Can if, you? If, uh, that woman can't sleep in the same room with him. <laughs> I'm so glad I Stop it, Warren. <laughs> Stop. Yeah, well, first of all, he needs to get his teeth fixed. That's always bothered me when he talks. I'm telling Worse you. Worse than Austin Bowers. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, let's, let's get back to civility. <laughs> the, that's the women. The women, yeah, you okay. know, we're looking at the cosmetic but look, stuff. Some, oh, of yeah. his, some of his picks, I think, are, are very good. Brilliant. Uh, one yeah. of them that, that may be one of his picks is uh, Secretary of Defense with General Mattis, which I don't know. Has there ever been a uh, Secretary of Defense or a Secretary of War who was a general? I'm retired sure. General? I'm sure. It seems like that uh, you would make you among the most qualified. I'll have to look that up, though. But you know? I can't think of one going back to Reagan. But Mattis is, is absolutely 150% leadership. Mm-hmm. And I promise you, you won't see anything like Bob Gates out there stuttering and stammering and lying and, and talking about things that he absolutely knows nothing about. When it comes down to when it comes down to general matters, I have been told that that man is an intellectual of intellectuals, and he also is full of common sense. Mm-hmm. They said he has a personal library of over seventy five hundred books, and he said that you know where he stands. That he is a no nonsense. <laughs> get along with everybody kind of a person, but you're going to do your job and I'm going to do my job. And that's what it's going to be. You got to read some of those quotes. They have they're <laughs> online. There's some great quotes from General Mattis. And I mean, they're, they're really, I can't repeat a lot of yeah. them. But I did they think are it was really funny. good. 44 year veteran. I but mean, one leading of my, Marines one in battle. One of my battle. favorite stories about him was, was General Krulak, former commandant of the Marine Corps, said that when he was commandant, they would bake cookies, he and his wife, and take them to all the Marine Guard. Yeah. The Marines who were standing guard around Washington, they show up at, at Quantum 
Monaco, and he said that they go in there, and it was a Lance Corporal who was on, on, on duty, and he said, where's the duty officer? He said, uh, who's the duty officer? He said, uh, that would be Brigadier General Mattis. And he said, no, son, I'm talking about the duty officer. Who's the duty officer tonight? This was Christmas Eve. He yeah. said, mm-hmm. that would be Gen- Brigadier General Mattis. He is duty officer tonight. Unbelievable. He said, for yeah. real? And he said, it's about that time he came in. He said, yeah, he said the lieutenant who was supposed to have duty had a wife and kids, so I, I stood duty for See, him. See, that's wow. beautiful. Let me tell you something. The, the, the top three picks that I think show Trump is serious about national security, include, including General Mattis, uh, the NSA, Michael Flynn, and his deputy director is KT McFarlane. That woman has, is smart, very smart. I really like her. She goes way back, I mean, she goes back beyond Reagan, I believe, but she was under Reagan in that in that position, some position there. CIA, Congressman Mike Pompeo, I think those three Ooh, show. That's going to be good. Hmm? Pompeo, oh, he's going to be awesome. And and if, if you look at their at, at the resume of all three of these guys, they are serious mm-hmm. about protecting this country. Let's go to the phones. 232-1542, two, yep. two, two, your questions and comments always welcomed every week on Winging It Wednesday. Go ahead with your question and or comment. Well, I got a comment. It's about, uh, it's her name, Chow. Is that how you say it? Yes. Elaine Chow, yes. Mitch McConnell's wife. Yeah. Um, the reason why they said he's a attracted to him is because she likes turkey and he's got a gobble neck oh, oh no oh, no no, no. <laughs> wow oh, there. Warren's for every for Warren's every intellectual hey thank you for your comment thank you for your comment, uh, uh, thank you for your comment. <laughs> <laughs> hey while we're on this topic we ran a little bit long on this but let's just go ahead and get romney uh, <laughs> hey let's get romney out the way in more ways than one um I mean, do you? Here's what you want to know my theory about this. This is Rob's theory from Lafayette, Louisiana, millennial. Okay. Uh oh. I think they're all just. I, I don't think he's ever was ever being considered for Secretary of State. I think this Me is too. all punishment Me too. for saying what he did. I do. And I Trump, think Trump is Trump is publicly yep. just leading him on. Yep. And and Kellyanne Conway was instructed yes. to go against go against him in quotes. But she's not going against him. I no. don't think he would ever be secretary now, of state. Now, the word out of the campaign is that she was sent out there to do that yes. at, at Trump's bidding. I she's don't know. way the, too smart listen, for that. You, every time people think they have the Trump transition mm-hmm. thing figured out, yeah. they, they end up being proven wrong. Yeah, now, yeah, you're right. what I do think was brilliant, <laughs> here they have a camera on them having dinner at Jean Georges. And by the way, I've eaten at Jean Georges. It is a fabulous place. And I want to know who picked up the tab. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, so they have the cameras in there, and Fox has it. They're cutting in and out all night, you know, going I back and that was forth. So weird. Imagine being and, the people at the table next to him. I get and the they, well, they managed. They did manage to block the rest of the people out. But yeah. okay, so Romney comes out and basically eats a ton of crow. And talks about how brilliant Trump has been in this transition and how great he is and on and on and how I've really da 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 da. And so I'm thinking, okay, buddy, if the, what they told him was if you make this right, uh-huh. if you do enough groveling uh-huh. and enough crow eating uh-huh. and to mollify all the people in my campaign who are really upset with your name even being floated, maybe we'll pick you for this. But I, I don't think we know. I don't think we have any right. idea whether he's going to pick him or not. I will be shocked if it's him. But I think that, that little jive that he did last night outside the restaurant, yes. I think that was step one. Wrap this one up for us, Warren. Mitt or Let no Mitt? Let me tell you the other part of this. When when that thing first hit with Mitt and his letter about Trump being no count and all this, that, and other, uh. one of my friends who is an old, old, old-time political hack, called me and said, you know what I really think this is? And she said, I said, what? She said, I think Donald Trump wrote that letter and told Mitt Romney, sign your name to this and send it out there. Said, because if you look what happened, she said, that doesn't sound like Mitt Romney at At all all in that letter. And she said, what happened as soon as that thing hit? Trump's poll numbers jumped. People rallied around him. And they said... (laughs) They said, well, Mitt Romney, you're a sorry SOB. <laughs> Donald <laughs> Trump, you need my help. And on and on and on. Now, did that happen? I don't know. But it's also somewhat plausible. And that then he says, well, look, we're going to, you know, you did your job. Now we're going to talk about doing something else. But I do not believe Mitt Romney ought to be Secretary of State. Mm, I don't either. I said, you know, but after Hillary and, uh, and the one we got now, Kerry, mm-hmm. 
My but daughter's but dog would do good. Think, think, about, <laughs> think about this also in terms of they have a $6 billion shortfall in the State Department. It is a swamp. They have no idea where that money is. Six this this billion was under dollars. six billion dollars missing. Well, one and, and that's been documented of, uh, uh, under Hillary Clinton. So where did the money go? And you got to have a guy in there who knows something about cleaning up swamps. And as a venture capitalist, um, Romney has gone in and cleaned up a bunch of companies. My personal pick would be if you're going to clean it up, do a dual thing. Have somebody like a front guy who can deal with all those foreign crazies like uh, Mitt Romney, and then get a Carl Icahn in there. <laughs> to fix the business side. <laughs> fix the business side. All right, side. we do need to get a break in. This is Winging It Wednesday, brought to you by Service Chevrolet Woo. Cadillac. Every Wednesday we do it, and we will be back. Coming up, we will have more topics, including the recount. Is it worth it? We'll find out what our panelists think. Coming up on Katie Nunn's Morning News. 740... At KPL, welcome back to Winging It Wednesday, brought to you by our friends over at Service Chevrolet Cadillac. Look, Louisiana's number one choice for GM vehicles, the largest yep. selection, and guess what? It's the last day of the month, but it has been Black Friday all month long. And the last day of the month is always a good time to go and get yourself a little caddy, a little Chevy. That's always a good thing. Huge selection <laughs> of cars at 1212 Ambassador Capri. You I'm can shop thinking- online. At servicegm.com. They're wanting to make a deal last day of a month. Bernie, you teasing me. You just It's like you're just holding the steak right in Look front at of this, me. Rob. The steak might be black with a gray interior and a sky view sunroof for me, just to oh, say. Oh, that's I'll great. Let you Are know you going to wear the chauffeur's days. hat when I get to sit in the back seat? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. you got to drive me. Hey, uh, Cadillac certified pre owns comes with the same warranty as a new Cadillac. They do. Six it's years great. or 70,000 miles. Go and see them. Service Chevrolet Cadillac. So... This recount effort seems to be going along despite the dates. I I don't know why they didn't check on this. Like Pennsylvania was a big one. In the midst of all this recount stuff, the limit passed. The time passed. They (laughs) certified the vote. It's done with. Um, Is this really a Jill Stein thing? Does she really have that much power? Or is this Jill Stein doing it as a front for someone else? Warren? I think what this whole thing is about is trying to delegitimize Donald Trump's victory and uh, everything that they can do, starting off from day one, they're going to do. Mm-hmm. And I do believe that the more of this stuff that, that comes out, it, the better it's going to be for the common sense people in this country who are going to turn around and look and say, you know, it is us against them. You know, it is those people who get up in the morning, they go to work, they try to feed the family, they try to provide for them. They're those who produce and they're those who take. And that basically the takers are government who takes everything from you, gives nothing back to you. And, and I think it was David Brinkley who said it's the middle working class Americans who do all the work, pay all the taxes, get none of the credit and all the blame. And this kind of such stuff, if you really look at it, when it comes up, most cases, They really have no intentions of trying to do what they say they're trying to do. There's some kind of ulterior motives in there. (laughs) And generally, I'll guarantee you, there's also going to be some money made in this thing. Mm -hmm. Donations coming in, who's going to get what, how much. You know, and a lot of times it's not just that they put money in their pocket, but it's all the perks. You know, somebody may wind up with a corporate jet out of this deal, you know, simply because we need it to run around here, there, and everywhere. Well, you know, the, the recount paid for it, and so... You know, we get to keep what's left over. And you know, I don't know if that's the fact, but I'm just telling you that when, you know, I, you go back and listen to candidate Clinton say how appalling it is that a candidate would even say that they might question the outcome of an election. That is appalling. It's never happened in this country. Not going at blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Mr. Trump should be ashamed of himself for saying that. And then, you know, what happens? They get between three to five million illegal votes in California, I think, alone. And they turn around and start saying, we want to recount, we want to recount, you know. So anyway, sometimes a recount is actually done when it's a real close election for a legitimate reason. Mm -hmm. In this particular instance, I think it's just all about we're going to do everything we possibly can to delegitimize Donald Trump's election. Now... Is it a little bit of payback for the Republicans who sat there and, and were the party of no for eight years during Obama, except they really weren't. I mean, they said that, but yet they, they let pass everything that he wanted passed. As Reverend Manning said, they gave him everything. 
<laughs> they gave him everything. Gave him the highest office in the universe. They gave him the Nobel Prize he didn't deserve. They gave him everything. And that was the Republican Party basically doing that. And so I think that the Democrats are going this time, is that they're going to give him nothing. They're going to block him everywhere. Yeah. And, and, and so that's it. All right, Carol. Well, as usual, Shakespeare had a great line for this. Jill Stein, an attendant player who frets and struts her hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. And thankfully, let's hope that's true. This is not this is not a recount. This is a fundraiser for Jill Stein. She has to prove that she is still relevant. And if she were really concerned about the recount in Michigan or Hillary Clinton losing by such a narrow margin, well, if she had gotten out, Hillary Clinton might might have won Michigan. But it wouldn't have made any difference between Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, which are not in doubt in any way, shape, or form, and really neither is Michigan. Uh, they, you know, she can't win it without Pennsylvania. I mean, they can't throw it over to Hillary without Pennsylvania. So Warren is absolutely right. The whole thing is to keep Trump off balance and de- and try to delegitimize him for all the cupcakes uh, or snowflakes out there that are just so <laughs> melting down about our government, how awful this is that we've elected a businessman as our president. He's just going to destroy all the institutions of government. The ones that are left over after Obama did his best to try to destroy them. But <laughs> but anyway, uh, no, this, this is not going anywhere. Absolutely not. And Jill Stein should just go away. I mean, you know, you talk about the, the Democrat Party. They always like to say the Republicans, oh, these, we have so many warring factions. But the Democrat Party is just... They are just fossilized. They are so, uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. This guy, Ryan, he's an interesting character. I saw him on Fox News Sunday. He has um, meditation things and, I mean, he's just, he's an interesting guy. Uh And he says it's time for a big change and Nancy Pelosi and all those who have been in control haven't done a very good job, have they? Well, I think it's very telling. Nancy Pelosi is trying to get the anonymous vote thing gone Mm -hmm. well you know with with the selection of Mm -hmm. the democratic leadership and if that isn't telling of course she doesn't want it to be anonymous because she wants to know every single person who she thinks is her friend who votes against her well she wants the equivalent of super delegates yep exactly that's exactly what she wants a guarantee and she's raised a lot of money for the party but um you know he's he's absolutely right the democrats have got to figure out how to uh come into the 21st century All right, we're going to take a break. We'll come back. Local issues and local races turn out for the runoff next week. Seems to be a little bit dismal on early voting. We'll give you an update on that coming up. It's Winging It Wednesday, driven by Service Chevrolet Cadillac. Welcome back to Wing and Wednesday, brought to you by Service Chevrolet Cadillac. We are also on Facebook Live this morning. Go to KPL News' page. Hey, guys, we have already reached 19,940 people this morning. Ooh. Sharon says, I think KT McFarland is a brilliant choice, just awesome. Yep. And Franny says, thanks for making the trip to work a bit better. But, um, Franny... I hope you're not watching the video while you're driving because <laughs> you might end up in hey, Bernie's traffic report. It is true. <laughs> but if she's on West Congress, it's going to be okay. I, okay. And there's there's construction on Congress, Camellia. <laughs> so Vero she's going Sparrow, slow anyway. Yes, Ambassador we're, Caffrey, pick an intersection. We're fixing Camellia again for about the 20th time. Oh, again. Oh, yeah, good. they've got it good. down to one it's lane. The, I was about to say the amazing one lane camellia right now. Yes. I tried oh. to call Tom Carroll yesterday because uh-huh. I wanted an interview, and it just goes to a thing. But there's he doesn't have the voicemail thing set up. Yeah, so I think I'm being. But no, I'll give it, I, no. Let me tell you something. I'll give Tom Carroll this. We've seen some activity since he's gotten back well, in there. There you go. Yeah. So let's We're talk about the runoff. Stuff fixed. Yep. Runoff election. Early voting has started. Numbers. Uh, first, kind of look at the numbers. Not very high. Um, early predictions, thoughts on the election, Carol? A little burnout, maybe. I think they'll yeah. go vote because people aren't afraid of having to stand in line for a long time. I think that really kind of drove a lot of the early. Uh, plus, you know, they wanted to make sure they were heard and didn't want anything to interfere with their ability to ha- make their voices heard. Uh, this is always true. You know, when we've got this crazy thing that we're always the last ones to send people to Congress because of this you know, the so-called jungle primary and always having a runoff usually, 
99% of the time we have a runoff in December. So uh, it's happening once again. I, You know, I, this is going to be, as usual, this is what everybody says, it's getting out your voters. Uh-huh. It's really critical for these guys to get their voters out if they want to win because it, you're going to have to be highly motivated. You know, there's not that big impetus of the presidential election. Um, a lot of people, you know, eh, they could care less. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you, I think the third congressional race was the most interesting for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that Scott on jail could have imagined this is who he would be up against. You know, I don't think a lot of people took Captain Clay Higgins seriously. Um, but we see, you know, you go to the Facebook posts, just just use that as your primary. Look at both sides. If you see the number of times his stuff is shared from his campaign sites to what Angel, I mean, is the excitement there? I think absolutely, but you hit on it perfectly. There's not the presidential race to get people there. Are people going to take the time for Well, Higgins? Clay, let me put it this way. I think Clay Higgins' people are highly motivated. Um, and a lot of that is the backlash from the governor's race. A lot of that is. And so, uh, and the other thing is the force of his personality. Oh my goodness! When you look at the the, the views on his uh, on his videos, his online videos, I mean, it's it's amazing. And that goes way back. I mean, the Cajun John Wayne, they, you know. So yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Warren, your thoughts? First thing you're talking about that Angel did not take Clay Higgins serious. I think the biggest problem that Angel has is that people are taking him serious. And they have taken him serious when they sat there and looked at who he is and what he has done. And basically he is what everybody voted against two career, weeks ago. And politician. what he has done, when you look at his record, he has been the typical the typical say anything, do anything, get nothing accomplished politician, take everything for granted. You know, the voter turnout depends on really, really one thing, the candidate. And if people look at the candidates and say, it's not worth my effort to go over there, then there's going to be a low turnout. And I think, you know, Angel has not energized anybody. Some of my friends in the African-American community that are Democrats have told me that my friends are not voting for Angel. And that, you know, he is so closely tied to Bobby Jindal and and that failed group. I said if, if I was the Higgins group, I would blanket I would blanket the mailboxes of every yeah. voter in this district with flyers showing pictures of Angel and Bobby Jindal and whatever, you know, just like what the Republicans did with, with Barack Obama. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, you can't separate the two. And, uh, you know, but... He is the ultimate insider, really, but, you if know, you look but it's at funny it, insider, outsider. In this election cycle, both president, uh, you know, this congressional race and everything, in any other situation, the kind of accusations that have been thrown at a Trump and at a Higgins, Higgins exactly. would have would have completely sunk a candidate like would have been the end. I'm sorry. I'm going to bring my wife out for an apology and we're going to give up. Mm-hmm. But but I think that they're seeing, you know, that, you know, Trump and Higgins aren't politicians. They just keep rolling with it. I, I think, you know, you bring up a very good point because I do think that the people are seeing this more clearly than in the past, you know, rather than going for all the modeling kind of things. I'm a family man. I'm 100 percent pro-life. I'm 100. They, 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 we know you're flawed, but you're an outsider. And we think we have a better shot with you shaking up the system than with that other guy. And we want the system shaken. Because many people will say, uh, which is better, the saint or the sinner? And the other thing is, if I get a guy like a Scott, that's what I'm saying. That's, you know, that's the kinds of conversations I have had about the third congressional district. That has been the theme. Yes, sir. It has been the theme. Well, the thing is, and and a a Scott Angel, he could, the St. Martin Parish Republican Party endorsed Clay Higgins. He's from St. Martin Parish. The Lafayette Parish Executive Committee endorsed Clay Higgins. All right, then. Well, we will keep you up to date, of course. KPL965.com for all your continuing election coverage. Winging It Wednesday brought to you every week by Service Chevrolet Cadillac. Let's, hey, let's wrap it up with Home for the Holidays. Home for Where the can Holidays. Get, the tickets? get the tickets during regular business hours at Home Bank and Doug Ashley Building Materials and online at Home for the Holidays, LA.com. Thank you guys for all your help. The money stays Thank right here. Awesome programs here in our area. And when I tell you, I got to go to the banquet last year with Bernie. Uh, after the home for the holidays and got to see the faces on these, these oh, yeah. the nonprofit, you know, employees, these nonprofits spend their whole year fundraising, open up the envelope. I mean, it kind of gives me chills thinking because yeah. they don't know the amount, right. you know, they might have a roundabout kind of idea, 
But whenever someone opens up and says, do you realize how many kids I can help with this? Oh, do you realize uh, how many? And that's what makes it Let me it tell you, that is the deal. And they get cut. They're getting cut, yep. you know, yep. from some other yeah. age. I mean, there's just a, yeah. some so other look, folks that can't The challenges contribute. are even greater. Go back and watch the White Eisenhower's farewell address when he starts talking about how many kids can be helped, how many hospitals can be built, how many schools can be built. Go back and watch that from January 1961. We will end on that. It's Winging It Wednesday on K-Rush.